Hi everyone, welcome to the What's on my iPhone video. I thought this would be kind of a fun video to make and you can kind of see um, what I've got going on on my phone. I try to keep it somewhat consistent over the years, uh, but it does change from time to time as far as certain apps that I'm using or what I'm uh, doing differently, but uh, just like anybody else. But I wanted to kind of take you on a little bit of a tour and show you what I've got on my phone. Lock screen is nothing special currently. It's just the standard Apple um, space theme from Earth. Um, I kind of like it. It's kind of minimal. It's neat and I like how it animates into the home screen which is very neat. My home screen I always keep a weather widget up top at the left so I can see obviously weather, um, if there's rain or snow coming up kind of the high and low for the day and I can tap in for more info if I want. I keep my calendar up at the top right. I'm currently using Google Calendar I do switch back and forth sometimes between um, Apple Calendar and Google Calendar depending on um, just what I'm feeling like and, and what I've got going on. Uh, oftentimes if I'm using my Apple Watch, which I'm not currently, um, then I'll use the Apple Calendar to make sure it syncs immediately to my Apple Watch. But when I'm not, then I'll use Google Calendar. Um, I just find Google Calendar is, uh, it works a little bit better, especially since I use it for work. Um, it's just much better even though I don't care for Google products as much you'll find that I use quite a few of them in this video. Um, I use Gmail again I bounce back and forth between Apple's stock mail app and Gmail I've even tried Edison Spark but I just keep coming back to Gmail um, just I have all Gmail accounts and it just works natively um, and that's what I like is just something that works. Started using uh, Google Maps. I used Apple Maps for the longest time, but I'm going to switch to Google Maps for a while and see how that goes. I typically bounce between them back and forth because I like Apple Maps navigation better, even though Google Maps has better live traffic data and like website data. I like Apple Maps for navigating, Google Maps for searching. So I'm just going to try to use Google Maps for a while and see if I can get used to the navigation. I used to be all Google Maps and then I switched to Apple Maps and so now I'm kind of looking back at using Google Maps primarily so I don't have to jump back and forth between the two. I use Google Photos. Again, this seems to be a theme here, but I just switched back from iCloud Photos. I was using Google Photos, then I switched to iCloud, then I switched back to Google Photos. Um, I thought Apple releasing the shared library feature would make it much easier and nicer uh, between sharing between me and my wife and our, our iPhones and devices. but it's just not, I like the way Google handles it much better. The photos experience is so much better, especially for sharing um, albums of our kids with the family. So I, I definitely prefer Google Photos. It's a headache and a half to switch back and forth between the two platforms, but I, I prefer it much more. I have a stock camera app, which it's kind of redundant because I have it up here. And then obviously it's also um, on the lock screen, but my muscle memory has been so used to, if I'm doing something on my phone, and I need to get back to the camera, I just swipe up and go there. Um, so it's a muscle memory thing. My wallet app, I do have the Apple credit card that I use for some things occasionally. Um, so that just helps me uh, track it and keep on top of paying it off when I need to. Um, and then I have other like passes and info in there for like bank account stuff. That's just easy to see and get to. Uh, the Bible app, I try to get into that every day if I can. And then I also have the verse of the day um, linked here on my card on the left, but we'll go over that in a minute once I'm done with the home screen. I have my notes app. I tend to just get into there to jot down any notes and that is just, that's a whole nother tour for another day. Um, but I have it all broken out as far as like uh, notes for myself and between my wife and family. Um, I do use Notion for other things, but as far as notes, if something just pops up, I need to think of it quickly, then that's, um, that's what I use because it just works well between my devices. I also use reminders for the same reason. I can just ask Siri to, uh, sorry, turn down the brightness. I can just ask Siri to uh, remind me of something and that's just the quickest and easiest way uh, to stay on top of it. I've used other apps in the past like Tick Tick and um, Things 3 and, and I just find reminders is not the best, definitely by far not the best, but it's built in and it works well with Siri and it's just, it works, so it's good enough for me. Uh, the native podcast app for listening. Again, I've used many third-party apps in the past, including even going to Spotify, um, but I currently don't subscribe to Spotify, so I just I, I find the native podcast app works just fine, and I pretty much can get everything I want on it, um, minus a couple shows, but that's fine with me. 
Facebook Messenger because I'm usually always selling something on Marketplace. It just helps me stay on top of messages to keep on my home screen, even though I really don't like it on my home screen. Google News, um, something I'm trying to get in the habit of is uh, scrolling uh, news articles on there instead of on my social media if I can help it just to help me stay up to date with current events and trends. So I thought putting it on my home screen would help. Um, we'll see if it actually does help. And then find mine to be able to track my wife and devices. Um, not that I track her without her knowing. We just share each other's location. We did use Life360 for a while, but I found it to be a big battery drain for both of us. And then there was a lot of uh, just glitchy bugs now and then. Find My works. It's a little slower and not as real time as Life360, but Find My works just fine and it's integrated. And then obviously I have my phone, I have my web browser, my messages, and then I use YouTube music because I started paying for YouTube premium and I found that with, you know, when you get, when you have premium and ad free YouTube and then you get music with it, it's not the best. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's as great as Spotify or Apple Music, but it's pretty close. I'd say it's like an 8 out of 10 if Spotify and Apple Music are a 10 out of 10, which they're not. A, it's 80% um, good, and that's good enough for me. Um, so I use YouTube Music as my streaming uh, music service of choice. And then swiping over to the left, I can see my battery uh, percentages for uh, my phone and my watch, and as well as my AirPods when they're connected. Um, my investment portfolio, which is booming at the moment, um, working on doing some different things with that. I also have my screen time there that I can see. I find that to be just a helpful tile to stay mindful of the time I'm spending. Uh, set network. This is a little shortcut I created. Again, that's a whole separate video, but these are my top shortcuts where I can select, do I want my phone to use 5G or LTE, uh, depending on if I want to save battery or not. So it's just a quick toggle between the two that's come in handy. And then I can set an alarm in the morning. I can have all of my alarms listed out and pick which one I want. Um, I usually don't use my phone as an alarm, but if I need to, it's there. I don't often use that shortcut. I forget about it. I find just going down into my alarm app is much easier. Um, sometimes I have it on my home screen, sometimes not. Uh, clipboard tools. This is one that, um, there's nothing in the clipboard right now, but I can edit and like copy and paste and find like previously used things in my clipboard. Again, I don't use it that often, but when I do need it, it's there. And then AirPlay, I can like pick device, pick which device my phone is playing back to. But again, a little redundant because I can just, I can do that from here as well. So um, just some shortcuts that I have laid out. And then, like I say, a verse of the day that I can at least swipe over and start reading and get into um, my reading for the day just removes a hurdle for me. And then, like I said, that's my home screen. And then sliding over here, again, I switch things up a lot. I like to take advantage of widgets when I can. I usually have like a photos widget at the top and then these are all pushed down. But I got rid of that because it just adds clutter and it distracts me and wants me to jump into an app. I'm more of a utilitarian style, like it needs to have a purpose if there's gonna be a widget instead of just for aesthetics. So um, everything's up here at the top. I have my social folder. Um, I try to hide these a little bit if I can help it because if I just jump in, I'll spend all day in social media. I don't particularly like having social media on my phone, but it has its purposes. Facebook, I pretty much only use for selling things on Marketplace at the moment. Otherwise, I'm probably going to delete it and only check it on the computer. Um, Reddit is occasionally fun to scroll if I'm bored, but I try to stay off of there. I find a lot of value in LinkedIn, reading articles and just seeing what my peers are up to. Uh, Mastodon, I've been starting to get into that as Twitter fades, but I've really enjoyed Twitter lately. That's probably my favorite social platform at the moment to just scroll and see what's going on and read all about what's happening. And then Instagram, I don't really get on there, but maybe a couple times a week and then find all the reels that my wife sent me. Um, I have Discord for uh, Minecraft server chat that I'm a part of. I have my Google Authenticator app because I'm constantly getting logged out of Facebook and I need to re-log in um, for work and then Goodreads so I can keep track of uh, what I'm reading and what other people are reading on my Kindle. And the house folder, uh, ring for the doorbell, uh, my queue is our garage door opener so I can open and close it, nest so I can control the thermostat and then wise uh, to see a couple of the security cameras around. So that's the house folder. 
a couple forums. Um, I drive a Silverado and my wife drives a, a Sedona. So there's two different uh, web forums that I bookmarked there that just takes you out to the web so that you can um, read and I'll occasionally post questions if I have issues or whatever. Um, it's just, it's fun to see what other people are talking about. So that's kind of just quick, easy access to uh, vehicle forums and stuff, which I enjoy. I have the games folder, which I normally leave on a third page, but I don't have that right now because um, it tends to get distracting. been really into Apex Legends lately. Um, I like Call of Duty Mobile. Wordle, I do sometimes. I've kind of fallen out of the habit of it. Fallout Shelter is one I downloaded recently, but haven't even opened yet. I played it a lot in the past, but I'm not sure if I want to get into it. And then Werewolves, when we, when we uh, play Werewolf. So that's a fun one. I have my settings app because I always find myself jumping into settings to do something. So I just put it there to make it easy instead of swiping down trying to find settings. I have the photos app. Even though I have Google photos there, I have these photos here because I try to stay on top of like clearing the memory and clearing the trash. Even though I don't need to, I'm just super careful that way to uh, keep my storage space um, as minimal as possible on my phone. And that just makes it easy if I'm like looking for a specific photo that I have on my phone. Um, that I know I downloaded. It's just easy to access. Every dollar is our budgeting app from Dave Ramsey. So that makes it easy to just jump in and categorize our spending as I go throughout the month. I can drag and drop like our groceries or gas expenses um, into there. And that just helps us stay on top of our spending. My files app just jumps into files and obviously it uh, lets me manage also what's in my Google Drive. And I tend to prefer this file experience as opposed to the native Google Drive app because it just makes it easier to share. And I can jump in and just see all my files that way and it's easier to email and share documents through here than it is to the native Google Drive app. Um, at least as far as I can tell right now, if I have to, I'll put the regular Google Drive on there, but files works just fine for me for now. And then I have my Notion, which is a whole separate video but um, I'll do a separate tour on this, but this just helps me manage my business and stay on top of my YouTube scheduling. And um, yeah, I love Notion, I've been in it for years. That's something we'll talk about another day. I have my YouTube studio for keeping on top of analytics and seeing what you guys like, currently at 1,605 subscribers. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And yeah, it just helps me stay on top of comments and getting back to you guys and uh, just keeping tabs on the channel. I have the YouTube app for consuming my content, which I probably spend too much time on. I have Kindle Notes, which is also a web bookmark that I just have that goes to Safari, but I set it up as a shortcut so I can have a fun icon to it. Um, and I can just see annotations. This is actually what my wife has been reading. I'll have to switch over to my account, but that just gives me quick access to uh, my notes I've taken on my Kindle. And I have the All Trails app for when we're going hiking and want to um, record a trail that we did. And then I have lots of other apps too on my phone that aren't occupying space on my home screen, you know, like camera connectivity apps, or I have Unsplash for some reason, um, just all of these other various apps, Lyft, you know, that like when I need to use something, I don't want to have to reinstall it and sign back in. I can just, I usually just pull down and search for it. Um, and then it finds it right away. Venmo, just Amazon, things like that, that I really try to uh, keep clear that these are only the things I use 80, 75 to 80% of the time. Everything else I can search for. And I try to just keep it as minimal as possible on my phone. But that's really it. That's all that I have on my phone. I tend to view it as a tool. It's a utility and I like to keep it clean and minimal. But thank you so much for watching. And that's what I have on my iPhone here in early 2023.